And mommy will speak to that as well. I mean, I'm also thinking, you know, the question continue also is, and how do we help heal our sons? How do you help heal your brothers and your father and your, your uncles? And it's not how do you just heal us, because we, black girls raise black boys, black women raise black men. So if there's violence in the man, you can't say, oh, that's not us. You can't say that. You know, as I deal with my own Shakespearean drama and my two sons. Oh no, it's real for me right now. I'm really sitting on the edge. <laughs> I, I, I am. And that, neither of them are in the room tonight, and I think that's interesting. Um, Mama Imani, you wanna, you wanna, Imani, you wanna speak to that, or Mama, Sister Ruth, did you wanna say something well, about I, any of that? I did. You know what? And 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 Ashara knows. That we sat together for a few mothers raising boys to men groups that we used to do at It Takes a Village and we commiserated about raising our boys. Um, but you know what, one of the things also that, uh, that came out of this film that, that, that deals with the whole issue of, uh, of violence and rape and, and what we actually not only sometimes accept in our community and in our relationships but also what we sometimes don't realize we don't deserve, you know, and sometimes it comes from um, our roots. And you know, what she said in, in the movie, um, which of course was in the poem, um, about knowing the root of, of, of our experiences and our behavior and, and our actions and everything. And you know, for many of us who have been sexually assaulted as kids or had all different kinds of things in our lives, we grow up and feel like the sister, you know, Tandy Newton played, um, that we don't deserve better. This is this is our lot in life, you know, and and it's really about not only forgiving, you know, those perpetrators. And when I say forgive, that doesn't mean forget, and that doesn't mean that you know, forgiveness is not for them; it's for us. But forgiving them, and then forgiving ourselves because of we have kept ourselves back from the potential because of what other folks have done to us. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that's, that's something that starts with us. And in terms of our boys, you know, um, not looking at them like they're men when they're 10 and 12 years old. You know, let boys be boys, keep boys boys. But also, you know, people say, well, I want to teach my boy how to respect women. I'm sorry, too much hip hop and rap is, is so violent and so disrespectful of women. If that's all they're listening to, that's what they're going to feel. So that's, you know, I'm not saying it's for everybody, but I do think that that has a lot to do with um, the culture of violence. And it's what and, and what's perpetrated, perpetuating it. All of that, by the way, all of that. Um, you know, it's interesting because this morning when I knew I was coming here, I was playing around with this idea. I was listening to um, It's a Man's World by James Brown. And I was trying to figure out what the balance is because I come from a family where it is a man's world. It is a man's world, and we all know the rest of the lyrics, and we live by that as well. Um, but what I came to, especially in watching the movie, is that while it is a man's world, you know, it is only a man's world because it, the earth and the universe was birthed through the womb of a woman and we gifted it to the man, okay? Um, so if it's a man's world, it's because I gave it to him. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of a hard concept to wrap our minds around, but when we watch what really, yeah, go ahead. It's true. It's, it's true. But really, um, what touched me the most um, with Loretta Devine, and when she walked in, I was like, those clothes are not going to be in that drawer. And Frank, again, did this to her. And it, it was really touching because um, in terms of how we deal with community and our men and how it relates to us, I can pinpoint that single-handedly every underlying issue that I've had, an, had trouble addressing all goes back to the relationship with my father um, in the natural order of things. And even the relationships that I have with my mother and through my mother, the only way I related to my mother was how she happened to be relating to my father at the time. 
So all of these things are really connected. And so I don't know that these conversations are so easy to have. We think about like Maslow's hierarchy of needs and we need love and we need this. I think sometimes we're just really missing the education and the development. We're not always given the opportunity, kind of like what you said, if you're 10 years old, you know, you're not running the household. But a lot of times this is the position that a lot of, especially young black boys are put in. So trying to understand the other piece of that also, and then also walking in this balance of being a woman. And I, I really liked the strength that Loretta Devine and, and, and the strength that her character played um, because I think that was really important. So many of us go back and forth when really standing in that balance and just being there when he needed to hold her and, and being able to lean on him, but also understanding that when the clothes are out of the drawer, we don't give a damn about no birthday cake. You know what I mean? Yes, um, you know, um, I'm also thinking just to connect with you all saying this self-loathing, this, this fear piece that has become the norm of our culture and, and in the light of um, these queer young folk thinking that they cannot move forward, this rash of uh, queer suicides and that connection, even if we can make one, to how sexuality was displayed in this film. You know, what does that mean? This is one movie, and this is one slice, and it's just a two hour, you know, it's a flash of our identity. But when we start talking about um, violence and fear and self-loathing and hatred, um, the fact that we have forgotten who we are, you know, says, you know what, I can't move forward. And there was hope in this movie. And um, maybe Jamie and, and uh, Mama Cleo, if you could, you know, just speak to that idea of uh, the belief that we can move forward. And, and if you have any thoughts around uh, homosexuality and homophobia in the black community, I would like to hear something from you on that. The first thought that I had was just, you know, long ago when we were first brought to this country, the emasculation of our men, and how that trauma plays out today, mm -hmm. um, with men feeling like they have to be the Superman just to reclaim what was taken back then. Um, and that, that pain and that trauma hasn't healed, hasn't been healed. And so I think that it's playing itself out today in the way that we socialize our young men in the way that um, my partner and I were taking a walk through the park the other day, and anybody who has kids in peewee football, don't hold this against me. Um, <laughs> but it was, I was amazed, you know, they were like three and four year old boys out on the field, and you know, they're lined up, and the coaches, there's like five coaches on the field, and the coaches are like, get your chicken wings out, and you push him, and you hit him, and you know, from babies taught that to be a man is to be violent, to be a man is to push your way through this world because nobody's going to step out of the way when you walk down the street if you're a black man in America. Um, and so, again, it's, it's systemic, and so how do we touch that? Um, not immediately, but slowly and continuously. Um, we, we fight that fight, but I think on, a, on an individual level, it's really looking at um, how do we allow our young men to embrace the softness, to embrace um, the parts that need to be touched and tender, and the parts that need to be cradled, and can they cry when they need to, and do we allow that to happen, or we just tell them that they need to be a man without really explaining all of what that means, because it's not just one dimensional. <laughs> 